군산도 로만 가세요. Good morning from Jeju. Okay, so it's about like 7:30, 8 a.m. and uh, I'm here at the Yongsil Trail entrance. And today I'm hiking up the Halasan Mountain. So uh, when you come to Jeju. There's a saying in Korean that means Jeju is Halasan and Halasan is Jeju. This mountain is like a defining feature of not just Jeju but also South Korea. Like it's such a well-known mountain, you cannot come to Jeju and not go up to Halasan. Now Halasan is um, one of the most famous mountain peaks here, one of the tallest uh, in uh, Korea, and. Uh, to go up uh, the mountain you actually can follow different trails okay so the longest one is about 10 kilometers and uh, takes about like uh, i think 10 hours uh, for a round trip and then you have shorter trails and all of that i genuinely wanted to do the longer trail but uh, you need to have a reservation in advance and uh, just look at the weather it started raining already so that probably wasn't such a good idea today so instead i'm doing one of the shorter trails this uh, trail that you can see behind me is the yongsil trail which i'm going to be hiking up on today this takes a around uh, four to five hours to complete the uh, trail and it's i think around six kilometer uh, back and forth so uh, yeah i'm all geared up uh, bought a raincoat because it seems to be drizzling already but the sad part is that the yongsil trail does not take you all the way to the top where you can actually see the crater it takes you to just a viewpoint and then gets you back so if you want to go all the way to the top of the mountain then make sure you do the longest route i'm going to try and leave as many details as i can in the description box so that you kind of get an idea of what trail you can go on okay i'm talking too much now i'm gonna go start hiking so this is the trail map okay so we are going to be starting at this point which is the yongso trail entrance and then we're going to hike all the way to this point called the vitsorium and then we're going to round back up and come back to the same point i'm only like five ten minutes into the trail and it's already so beautiful, it's crazy, it's like lush green on all sides, like a thick dense forest, uh, it's very like misty and hazy because it's drizzling a little bit and it's just so beautiful, I honestly feel bad right now that I did not make an early reservation and I could not do the whole uh, you know 10 kilometer long trail. I was literally thinking right now that I'm going to fly back to Jeju once again just to do the entire Halasan uh, mountain hike. This is too beautiful. And look at how well maintained the trail is. Like there are properly made steps. There's like barricades on both the sides so you don't stray off course. Like I'm already feeling I'm going to be having a lot of fun. arrived at this sort of a viewing deck in the middle of the trail and uh, my driver was right he said he warned me while getting out of the cab that uh, because it's too cloudy today so we're probably not gonna get any views and that's what is happening so this is like a viewpoint but all I can see is clouds but it's beautiful nonetheless I am literally quite literally walking among the clouds I literally feel like I'm gonna get blown away by the wind. It's so windy. It's so windy. Oh my god. It is so windy all along. And then you have these like little patches in the middle where uh, you have a lot of like bushes or trees. So like those patches are a little like less windy. So I'm kind of like stopping and taking a little shelter with the wind is so much. I'm literally like losing my balance while walking, it's that windy and it's technically not raining but I'm walking in the middle of the clouds so I'm drenched anyway. I think they've put up these red flags at different different places in between so that if it gets too cloudy or too misty, people kind of have a point of visibility. It started pouring and I think I'm more than halfway through to the shelter point. Uh, I'm trying to keep myself dry but the thing is uh, because it's so windy my raincoat is flying off. <sighs> 
so i have finally reached the shelter point they call it with sorium i don't know that, what that means in korean but uh, anyway so this is like a small heated uh, sort of room which is there you have benches and all of that or uh, some first aid options so i think i'm just going to dry off a little bit grab a snack maybe a protein bar or something relax for a bit and then head back the hike has been amazing fun it started raining a lot uh, when i reached the top and now when i'm climbing down the trail has become really slippery and slidey so i'm um i mean like extra careful is become super slippery at uh, times but thankfully they have these ropes and uh, like the steps are not that bad so it's uh, still possible to climb down otherwise the rain is insane so i have arrived as you can see the sign board at the black fox street in the old city of jeju now um jeju when it comes to food in jeju black pork is uh, one of the signature dishes that you must must try and this street known as the black pork street actually has a bunch of restaurants serving you black pork so let us go and try a traditional black pork jeju style meal after an amazing morning spent trekking up the halasan mountain uh, i am here for possibly what is going to be the most special meal i have here in jeju i am here in the old city of jeju to try out the jeju special black pork now if you don't know what jeju special black pork is uh, jeju has uh, this indigenous breed of pigs uh, which have a black coat so basically this pork is uh, uh basically their meat and this is like a specialty traditional dish right here in jeju they use pork belly and pork neck as the meat cuts and uh, they basically grill it it's boiled pork and it's grilled right in front of you on a special stone plate this meal like most others here in korea is served with a variety of side dishes there is lettuce there is uh, kimchi there is uh, spring onion there is a bunch of side dishes as usual but the two side that uh, black pork comes specially with are steamed eggs and uh, soya bean um, stew or soya bean paste so yeah i'm super pumped just waiting for the pork to get cooked and cannot wait to dig in the grilled pork is finally ready He is the server has given us a go ahead to start eating it. Till then, I kind of um, appetized myself with a, a roll made out of like the salad leaf and a cut of boiled pork and um, some chili sauce or whatever this is. There's a red kind, red colored thing. But yeah, the grill is now ready, so I'm gonna start eating it. I'm super excited to try the grilled pork. It looks super delish. they have served the grilled pork with an uh, with a fish sauce anchovies basically it's a sauce uh made with anchovies i'm going to try dipping the uh, pork cut in the anchovy sauce and try it mm I can see how it has a slightly different flavor than most of the regular other pork that I've tried before. This no problem. But there's also an interesting addition to this grill. Was like a really big mushroom. Um, the staff doesn't know the English name. They just know the Korean name. But this mushroom looks really interesting as well. Let's go and dip the mushroom in a little bit of salt. Wait till it cools down a bit. Wait a while. Oh, 
맛있는 전문. 저거 벌써 언니 리얼 나요. So I have entered from gate number three of the market, and um, here, as you can see, is full of the Jeju tangerines. There are like actual fresh tangerines, and then the sweets, chocolates, candies, all possible things made out of those fruits. So, so if you want to take back some edible Jeju souvenirs, this is a great uh, place to come. They also have like you know, Jeju tangerine keychains and fridge magnets and coffee mugs and all of that. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, To take back souvenirs, this is possibly the place you want to come to. At the Dongmun Market, you have a bunch of food stalls, okay, like street food and sweets and snackables and all of that. So, a huge thing over here are these like sugared, candied fruits. So, this is of course the Jeju tangerine, uh, and this has been coated in sugar and frozen. So, this is this seems to be like a really popular uh, sweet treat here. You can get it in other fruits also. There's strawberries, cherries, blueberries, green apples, and all of that. Okay, so uh, I spent like an hour, hour and a half just roaming around the uh, market, and uh, actually this market is pretty cool. So when they say traditional market, it's more like a local market. Okay, so you have like. Um, Fruits and vegetables. You have various meat and fish carts. Then you have all of these Jeju souvenirs. Then you have uh, even uh, stores selling your plasticware, glassware, and all of that. So it's like a very local sort of a market. And then you also have um, street food. A lot of street food stalls. Sadly, I had already had. An insanely heavy black pork meal, so I could not try out much of their street food. But uh, if you're looking for uh, some delicious street food, especially seafood, because I saw a lot of places uh, selling lobsters and crabs and all possible uh, like octopus, all kinds of seafood. So uh, if you want to try some specialty Jeju seafood, then uh, you can definitely try it in this market. And uh, Yeah, so I think after strolling around, I got uh, picked up some dried uh, Jeju tangerines or mandarins, whatever it is, uh, for uh, to take back with me and to give it to my family and friends. And yeah, so I'm gonna head back now. I've taken a quick tea break uh, while I hang around in the old town of Jeju. Uh, so I am trying out instead of coffee today for a change this uh, tea called Omija Cha. Uh, so this is a traditional Korean tea made out of magnolia berries. Okay, now omija in Korean means five flavors. So this this particular tea has sweetness, sourness, saltiness, pungency, and bitterness. So this is like one of the traditionally made beverages. Oh, nice! This is so soothing and refreshing. It also has a a uh, strong hit of lemon in it they've uh, put a lemon wedge on top so it has this like nice lemony zingy sort of uh, flavor <laughs> 